Oh, what a cat! A big manta shrimp hole. Beautiful Spanish mackerel. Oh, get away from me! No! Good morning and welcome to episode three of what is meant to be a long trip to the tip of Australia and beyond. Yeah, we've got a lot to look forward to guys. We're hoping to get to some wild waters that we've never been before over the next few months. But today, uh, we've got so much to explore. Around us here, there's some crazy mangrove systems, there's scattered different tropical islands. And the objective, as always, is we're doing our best to live from the ocean and from the land. And we've finished all of our seafood. So today, the goal number one is to get some fresh seafood, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Let's do it, guys. Let's jump in that boat and see if we can go catch some fish. Not off to a good start here. Oh, no. <laughs> this little the... trevally. <laughs> this huge trevally broke the rod. Okay. So pretty. There's a few snags. This rod is gonna get snagged. So that wind is really, really howling out the back there now. So we've actually come into this big giant bay where there's nine or ten different rivers that come out of the mountains here it's such an incredible spot these mangrove rivers of course are home to barramundi uh, mangrove jacks and crocodiles and a lot of cool species so we have actually eaten our entire food supply of meat of protein so objective today is we need to catch something to eat yeah straight ahead Uh, just drifting down along the edge of the mangroves here and Fran's casting the lure in. Um, there's a few little mullet and prawns getting chased so hopefully there's some predatory fish around. What have we got this time Fran? Nothing little. Little barracuda. We don't want him. Here you mate. We don't want you. Holy moly we've hooked up. Any idea? Oh geez it's, it's See, it feels like a good fish, eh, Brad? Looks like a trevally. Yeah, all right. But I'm so hungry. Yeah. <laughs> we were just talking about what we were going to have for dinner and what we wanted to catch. Well, anything. And we were basically saying anything. Oh, it's a big finger mark, Brad. How did you see that? Stop, get away from here. Stop. Fire, we don't have a net. Let's go steady, steady with him. Just perfect eating size finger mark. No. no. No! Oh. oh man, we've been talking off camera. I don't think you realize how much we wanted or needed that fish. It was jumping, wasn't it, Fran? Yeah. What do you think it is? It's just pulled. Oh, come on. Virus jump? Yeah. How are we going to land this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a foul hooked salmon, so try bring him around here, friend. He's just hooked. No! Oh, by the belly. PTSD. Try flick him up onto the platform here. Just go slow. Hey, we've got us just hooked. A good eating size blue salmon. All right. That was very lucky. So it's pretty hot now and I think a few days of not great sleep are catching up with us. We're a little bit flat but um, we're heading back to base camp where we've got our eyes on a giant manta shrimp. So fingers crossed we can outsmart him today. What do you reckon Fran? We're going to get him? Yeah, we'll get him. <laughs> we'll get him. Big one has been in the camp. So this is an ancient indigenous fish trap that we stumbled upon a few years ago when we were flying the drone and we just noticed the outline. And it's actually kind of the last of the working tide now. So as the tide drops out from the creek behind us, it drops out here and uh, all, the, all the, the mullet and sort of fish like that that have been in the river, they get caught in this U shape. And then that's when the indigenous folk would have speared them with a hand spear. But um, pretty cool to see that it's still working like thousands of years later. What did you find? I reckon this might be a, a big manta shrimp hole. Oh. I think so, eh? Might be. Give it a go. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between a mandarin shrimp hole and a crab hole. 
but we might be in luck here. We've got to get some bait. Oh, so tiny. The cutest little mango jack. Little mangrove jack. Oh, it's so cute. We didn't want you, mate. I'm sorry I'll let you go. What happened to you? Oh, you got some! I can see it jumping! Well done! bent that hook. That was a seriously strong mantis shrimp to be able to bend that. Bummer. All right, tonight in the Back to Basic Beach kitchen, we got pumpkin on their fire with soy sauce. Nice. And their thread feed salmon. I'm not sure yet how to cook <laughs> it. I think in flour, all purpose seasoning, because it's all we got in the pan, just fried, shallow fried in the pan. Nice. Yeah. Yum, yum. Let's do it. And there's rice next to the fire already. It wasn't the best fishing day we've ever had today, but we're sort of pretty limited at the moment with uh, some strong winds around, so we can only tuck into a few certain areas. But stick with us tomorrow. Um, as soon as that sun's up nice and early, we're going to set off and head off to an entirely new spot, hopefully with greener, greener pastures, bigger fish, and um, at some point we're keen to get back in the water. So hopefully that happens tomorrow. Go. Blue salmon on a bed of rice. All right, taste and difficulty rate. Probably difficulty. I'm going to say two. So they sort of jump on any old lure if they're in, if they're if they're there. What do you reckon about taste? In comparison to the others, I'd say three out of five. Three out of five. The so difficulty yeah. two, taste three out of five. Mm. No, it's really nice. Cooked this way, beautiful. Beautiful. And now we got pumpkin. Yeah, right, so we got fish, rice, and pumpkin, and uh, that's going to be us for tonight, guys. So we will see you bright and early in the morning. Don't go anywhere. We've got a big day planned tomorrow, haven't we, friends? See you in the morning. <laughs> see you in the morning. We've woken to a beautiful sunny morning this morning. We're going to pack up camp. There's plenty more islands to see on the way north, so we're going to continue our journey. Are you ready to go, Fran? Ready. It's too much to explore. Yeah. To be sitting here on Sunday <laughs> and relax. <laughs> on to the next one? Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Looks like there's some rain coming. Finally got a bit of protection from these islands, so we're going to put a line out and have a bit of a troll. Uh, fingers crossed we can catch something for dinner and if we get really desperate, if we don't catch anything, we can jump in and have a spear, but it doesn't look that inviting at the moment, so fingers crossed uh, we can have a bit of luck trolling. Fish on, Fred! Fish on! So with that rough weather coming, we really need to, to get a nice fish so we can sort of bunker down for a couple of days and this takes the pressure off. Beautiful Spanish mackerel. How does this one look? Yeah, this is a beautiful little island. We could pull in here for lunch, actually. Hope the sun comes out because everything just looks 10 times better when the sun pops, but this will do us fine, friend. Well, we need the sun to come up. Yeah. All right, fresh is best, so we're gonna get straight into some of this mackerel. I'm gonna fill it him up. What we're gonna do, I reckon, is, because it's lunchtime now, we'll eat some ceviche, and then we'll save the rest for dinner. So these knives are all available on the Back to Basics website. They're by far the best filleting knife I've ever used. 
Check that out. That's why we love Spanish mackerel. You just get so much bang for your buck. So much good meat on the one fish. For lunch in the back to basic beach kitchen, <laughs> we're gonna have macro ceviche. Salt, pepper, lemon, orange, onions, and a touch of olive oil. Plus the leftover rice and pumpkin from last night. There you are. Thank you. Fair enough for more. Ready? Oh yeah, the final touch, the olive oil. Gentle. Oh. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have anything without olive oil with the uh, Italian in the relationship. Yum, yum. Oh, this is awesome. We've had a bit of a turn of fate today, Fran. It's all worked out so well, hasn't it? Mm. Look at us now, sitting on a beautiful little island eating fresh fish. The sun is out. I know, it's magic. That's what it's all about. Like a pokeball. <laughs> pokeball. Pokey. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it is like a pokeball. I love how every one of these little islands has got something different about it, something unique. Um, some have got little freshwater streams that you can drink or swim in the freshwater. Some have got indigenous rock art that's hidden away that we've found a couple of these sites that aren't public knowledge. But we're going to go have a bit of a walk around on this one and see what we can find. Just around the corner here it looks pretty spectacular. Beautiful here. Oh, nice. Can you hop on up there? Beautiful. What an epic view from up the top here. The water's actually quite clear, but we're not actually going to camp here. Once we're sort of finished digesting lunch, we're going to head over and uh, set up camp on one of the other islands. Bit of a better anchorage over there, so it's all working out. Oh, there is a, a giant squid down there. like. Huge, huge, huge. It's really cool to have a bit of a bird's eye view of this. He's actually feeding in the shallows. I wish I could show that to you. Oh, he's down there. He'll probably be just out of sight for the GoPro, but it's pretty cool from up here being able to spot big squid like that. I'm also seeing turtles and stuff cruising past. Beautiful day now. Actually, Fran's doing her best to imitate a, a lizard or a, or, or a snake warming up on the hot rocks there. It's all sort of worked out. This is what I love most about these trips, just not really having an itinerary, just sort of bouncing between islands. That eagle has just picked something up. I was hoping we were gonna witness a bit of a hunt as that eagle came down on the squid, but it looks like he's occupied on something else. All right, we're all anchored up for the night. Just gonna go for a bit of a walk along the beach and Fran's keen to cast a, a lure and see if we can catch any fish. What's happening up there? Birds? Or? Yeah, there's two birds were fighting for that rock. Oh yeah? Well, let's go and... Um, let's get that rock. Yeah, let's go and take that rock. <laughs> this old coral washed up. A nice vantage point from up there. You're on! Get him out of the rock. Oh no. Oh, what a catch! <laughs> Coral trout. What I a... can't move from here though. <laughs> We're on these oyster rocks. This one hook. Bring him up, bring him up, bring him up. Hey! He'd be legal too. You're lucky we got oh. a mackerel. Nice. Alright. You're lucky guys. Mate. He's all good. Wrong way. Swim, swim! Gone. Oh, what? A big squid jumped on him. You can't normally catch these squid, but oh, he actually got hooked. Calamari? <laughs> I've come to realize on these trips, while like the big fish and the specky waterfalls make for like some great photos, it's sometimes the more mundane tasks like you know, a walk on the tide line looking for shells or even a sunset like this which 
really add to the whole experience and make the whole trip. So I hope wherever you are this weekend, you can get out on your own adventure. But if that's not possible, it's really cool that we can share this adventure with you guys. So thanks so much for coming along for the ride. We're just getting started, guys. This series has got another few months to go. So subscribe to the channel and uh, join us for the rest of the adventure. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next Sunday. Thanks for watching. I'm going to cry. <laughs>